If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And by all means, please feel free to share this video. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're gonna to take a look at Fraser Valley, British Columbia. But before that, this video is brought to you by Good Old Boy Gamer. Thank you for being a farm baron. So the Fraser Valley, British Columbia map can be found over at Hilly Farms itch.io page. And as a result of it being available over at itch and being a 4X map, this is gonna be available for PC players only. Now, if you have never downloaded anything from itch before, let me show you, you're gonna to go to the download now button. And then it's gonna take you to a suggested donation page. 750 is the suggested donation from the map author, but by all means, if you do not wish to give a free will donation, then just click on no thanks, just take me to the downloads. Of course, you can do a donation if you wish. 750 is such a suggested amount, or you can click on any of these buttons down below or type in your own value. But we're just gonna go to no thanks, just take me to the downloads. And now we're gonna go ahead and click download. And that is then going to download the map. Now, once you've downloaded the map, I highly suggest you come back and take a look at this page because it has a ton of information specific to this map. Now we have done our own map preview of this. If you wanna go check that out, you can, but I suggest you just continue to watch this video because this video is gonna be far more detailed than the map preview video that we did about two weeks ago. As I mentioned, this is a 4X map and it is designed around Fraser Valley in British Columbia, Canada. The first part of this description is gonna run you through a little bit of a kind of a story, setting up the gameplay on this map. Basically, your granddad has decided that he is done with respect to farming. He sent you off to college so you can get a little bit of an ag degree. And now that you're back, well, he has given the farm to you and decided to go on a long, long vacation. Now, this is the map author's very first map. As such, you're going to find some things that may be a little bit, a little bit interesting, a uh, little interesting choices made here and there, but it's all good. It's all good. One thing you will know, notice is depending on your GPU and your graphics settings, you may have some frame rate issues, meaning you're not st a steady 60 frames per second. I did run this map on a low end system and I was getting frames in the 30s using my low end graphics settings. I am struggling even on the 4070 Ti Super that I have on this system to achieve a solid 60 FPS running at 1440p with my high end settings. But I do believe that the reason for that is the map author has modified the LODs for some of the pine trees on the map in order to give the map a bit more fuller experience. And as such, you can pretty much see the pine trees all the way across the map. And I think that's what's dragging it down because if you look down and you're not seeing a whole lot of those pine trees, your frame rates do pop back up. A few issues that are known with respect to this map is that contracts may not complete. As many of us know, those of us that have used contracts quite extensively, this is more of a game issue as opposed to a map issue and can easily be rectified by using easy dev controls to spawn in some product in a trailer to just finish out the contract. Now this map also has a substantial number of required mods and that's what we're seeing listed here now on this page. If we include the map and all of these required mods, we're looking at approximately 1.45 gigabytes of storage needed for the mods and the map itself. All of these mods are over at the Main Giants website. And as such, if you load this map up without these mods listed, it will prompt you to auto download them. So that is very, very handy. In addition to these required mods, the map author is listing here a list of prefabs as a little bit of a credit back to those prefab authors. Now this map has already gotten an update since it was released. We are running the current release version, which is gonna be 1.0.0.1. .1. This map also includes 20 plus farms and 41 productions. And that's what we're seeing here is a listing of all the various farms and the productions and other points of interest like, well, the Speedway. 
which is just beside the quarry to the north. As far as farms go, well, there are over 20 unique farms on this map that include 10 dairy farms, one very large cow and pig farm, two horse farms, two chicken farms, two contracting yards. We have a sheep farm that includes grazing support, a pig and chicken farm, free range chicken pens, which may or may not conflict with your idea of what free range chickens are, but nonetheless, we have large open chicken pens. Every farm basically has a lot of the same things, being that we have the necessary structures for feeding our animals and supporting the feeding. Commodity bins or grain silos, storage for fertilizer, seed, lime, etc. Manure storage, a diesel tank for storage, a workshop trigger, a farmhouse, and ample shed space. This map is going to be excellent for multiplayer because a lot of the farms are set up exactly how the other farms. And you're going to see that when we get around to the farm tour portion of this map or this video. And as such, with 20 plus farms available, there's going to be plenty of options for lots of players on multiplayer to buy your farms and really stretch out while also being able to come together for harvest in other times. Now, if there are certain things on the farms that are not deletable, the map builder has suggested that you purchase the common areas, which are going to be zero dollars. So I did test deleting things on all of the maps, and I did find that there were or all of the farms. And I did find that there were some things that I was not able to delete, although I did not buy this common area. So that may correct your issues. This map also includes custom textures from Benji FS and Bullet Bill. This map includes hops from Team JZD Vid Husts, and they are over on the main Giants website. So that is also part of the required mods. This map includes alfalfa and clover as well, but you're not going to get distinctive alfalfa and clover fill types. If you mow your alfalfa or clover, it is going to come onto the ground as regular grass. This has simply been done to simplify animal feeding. But at least visually, you'll have some differences with respect to what you're seeing on the fields. This map also includes rye. And there is a note here that there is a custom precision soil map. In the release I am working with, it doesn't appear that the soil map is coded quite right because when I load the map, it's going to be spawning the generic soil map. I'm going to show you that when we load in the map in the log, and then we'll see that when we load the soil map itself. This map includes several productions. As I mentioned, 41 in all. We have a nursery, cement factory, and quarry. We also have a sawmill. We have the hops that we've already mentioned. You can sell many of your premium and platinum expansion products. There are custom vehicles included. And if you buy certain farmlands, you're going to be able to go around and do some lawn mowing and other role playing in town. Now, this just goes on for a little bit more detail, but we're just going to go ahead and load on into the map and see what everything is all about. So in addition to all of those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when looking at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, as well as straw harvest. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main starting area and all of the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, you do start out with starting machinery in all game modes. So pretty much the only difference is the fact that you do not own any land and your bank balances are going to be different per the various game modes. As I mentioned earlier, I did load the system up on a low end system with Intel, not Intel, AMD integrated graphics. And I was seeing with my custom low end system graphic settings, I was seeing frames in the 30s if I was looking across the map. If I lowered my viewpoint, down to more towards the ground, and therefore I was seeing less of the distance trees, I was able to achieve a little bit better frame rate. Even with this system, which is a 4070 Ti Super running at 1440p with custom very high graphic settings, I do see frame rates 
drop below 60 from time to time. Again, mostly as a result of those long distance viewable pine trees. So as you can see, this map does take quite a long time to load up because there are a lot of buildings and other things that are being spawned in. But once we load on in, Well, here we are, Brazier Valley, British Columbia. Now, I talked about the custom soil map, so I just want to scroll up here a bit till we get to that section of the log and show you what's coming in for me. I'm thinking that at some point in time, the XML got messed up a little bit, and it's just not referencing the custom soil map properly. I'm sure that'll be quickly fixed in an update. So right here we see a line. It is the bottom line in the log. Load soil map, documents, my games, farming simulator, mods, precision farming, soil maps, generic. So it is loading the generic soil map. Like I said, I think probably the XML somewhere has gotten a little bit messed up and it's just not referencing the in-map soil map. But that, again, is going to be a fairly easy fix. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And here we go. Now, this map has quite a varied interest. We've got some marshy land down here. And then we've got some mountainous terrain going on here, as well as here and here. Lots of forestry options to go on. And then lots of fairly flat farmland as well, with, again, tons of farms run it along this main road, and well as up here in the northwest. This map does include all standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, in addition to the rye, alfalfa, clover, and hops, as we've already mentioned, and if you have the premium expansion, the red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Taking a look at our lands overview, you see we start off by owning farmland ID 11 and 198. Now what is kind of interesting is we're load in, we load in right here, right beside field 82. This is gonna be also owned at the start, farmland ID 165. It was a little hard to see when we were zoomed way far out there, but we do own 165, as well as 11 and 198. So we do have up here 198, Massey Ferguson tractor, as well as a couple other things. So that is important to know. And then we have the rest of our starting machinery down here again at 165. Let's go back here and talk about where are the other farms on this map because we have a absolute boatload of them. Farmland ID 131 and 233. That is going to be a chicken farm. Farmland ID 133 is going to be a cow farm. Farmland ID 134 is also going to be a cow farm. Farmland ID 138 is going to be cows. And Farmland ID 140 is going to be pig, cow, and a BGA. Farmland ID 178 is going to be a cow pasture. Then we have Farmland ID 142. That is going to be a cow farm located right there. Farmland ID 135 is going to be chicken and pigs. That area is hidden a little bit, but it's right here beside farmland ID 122. We also have cows at farmland ID 145 and 146 located right here. We have pigs at farmland ID 141 as well. We also have farmland ID 141. 47. We have a horse farm at farmland ID 148. We have a cow farm at farmland ID 149. We have a cow and chicken area at farmland. Oh, sorry. We have a cow area at farmland ID 156. My notes are a little unclear here. We have a cow area at farmland ID 167. We also have then a sheep area at farmland ID 175. We have a horse area at farmland ID 171. We have a cow farm at farmland ID 161. 
We have a cow area farmland ID 162. We have a cow and horse area farmland ID 164. We have a sheep and horse area farmland ID 151 and 152. We have a sheep and chicken area farmland ID 174. And we have chickens at farmland ID 252. Those should be all of the main farm areas, at least that are having animals. You also have a viable biogas plant at farmland ID 226. So the two biogas plants on the map are going to be at 226 and 140. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field, what fields are included, and lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Remember, we do have a bit of free farmland identified here somewhere. That's something we're going to want to buy at some point, most likely. You see we have fields ranging in size from less than one hectare all the way up to over 30 hectares in size. There we go, viable 255. Let's go ahead and buy that just to see. And then we take a look at our field calculator screen. This is gonna show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Now we're gonna go ahead and skip the precision farming soil map because we do know that the soil map that is intended for this map is not gonna be listed. So therefore anything that we do show is likely not gonna be accurate once the map does get updated to correct the fact that the wrong soil map is being loaded. With respect to our crop counter, we do have a slightly customized crop counter because we are seeing that we do not have growth or harvest schedules for sugarcane. And we do have added schedules for rye, alfalfa, clover, and hops. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed see the ability to sell most, but not all of the base game crops available to us here in FS22. While we do not have the ability to sell sugarcane, it's not gonna be that big of a deal if you are playing with the growth calendar enabled. But if you do happen to turn the growth calendar off, if that is how you normally play, then you will find that you will be able to grow sugarcane but you do not have the ability to sell it. With respect to our eggs, wool, and milk, we do have the ability to sell all of those items, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through the base game production items, you will find that we are missing, for whatever reason, the inability to sell our fabric. We do have the ability to pretty much sell all of the other base game production items, so that is a great thing to see. With respect to lime, we do have the ability to buy lime and sell lime at the cement production. We also have the ability of getting rid of our stones if you are playing with stones enabled. We do have then rye. We have Western Hemlock Hedge. So these are the custom soil type or custom things we can sell. We have seedlings, dried hops, pallets, heating oil. Then we have our gravel, designer plants, cement, concrete garden stones, propane, and LPG. Now, with respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of the farm production pack items. We also have the ability to sell select items from the Platinum expansion, which is a good thing to see. And with respect to our premium expansion, well, we do have the ability to sell all of our premium expansion crops and production items. With respect to separated manure and pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to sell that separated manure, as well as our hay and straw pellets. And then we also have sell points for our premium expansion crops. We start out with a modest list of starting equipment, given the size of this map. With respect to animal areas, there are a total of 58 animal areas on this map. If you go and buy all of the farmlands, here we're seeing a fairly large list of farmland area or animals that we already own, even though we technically don't own any actual farms. So I think that is kind of an interesting thing. With respect to our contracts, we do have contracts available to us on this map. 
And with respect to our production chains owned at the start, there are a total of four fermenting silos, and we own all of them at the start. In fact, it looks like I miscounted. Correction, there are five fermenting silos, and we own all of them at the start. So we have one large, one medium, and three small. We're going to be able to take chaff, hay, and grass and convert those into silage. This map also has 10 collectibles. These are the 10 tractor collectibles from Elm Creek. Let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet. We start with the Fent Favorite 511C small tractor. We have the Massey and 3670 medium tractor, which is up in the forestry area that we've already talked about. We've got a 1986 pickup truck, the Welger DK115 trailer. We've got a pair of those. We have the HR4040 Power Harrow. We also have the Nomadic Star 900 Weeder. We have the GMD4411 side mower and the GMD3123 F front mower. We have the GF8712 Tedder, the Samez Z2840H wind rower. We've got the Kuhn VB3190 round baler, as well as the 7850C bale wrapper. For our tractor, we have the Q5 in front loader arms. For the front loader arms, we have a round bale fork. And then we also have a Samez 252 snowblower that also has been provided for us at the start. With respect to mods and DLCs, well, this map does have a modified HKS 32 propane heating oil tanker that has been configured to also transport heating oil and or propane. We have equipment here for hops collection with respect to the Hops equipment add-on mod. So we have a modified Zetor HS Schimmel. We have the Hopvine trailer, as well as the Hopvine puller. And then we have the PCH1011. This is going to be a cultivator suitable for working within the hops field. And then also we have a cutter used to cut off the remaining of the hops after harvesting. So a bit of a trimmer there. We also have modified conveyor belts in the S710 MK2 conveyor belt, the TC816 MK2, and the SL8022 Quantum MK2. As far as our starting farm, well, the tour is going to be pretty quick. We have our shed with some of our starting machinery. We have our farmhouse where we have our sleep trigger. And around the front, well, we got our pickup truck. And that is the starting farm area. Now let's jump up here because we also have some equipment up here in the forested area. So we have our massive person tractor. We have our mowers. We've got our snowblower up here. And we got a little bit of a meadow up here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and buy all of the other farmlands. And then we'll start taking a tour of each individual farm one at a time. Now that we've bought all the farms that we've already talked about, let's go ahead and take a look at our PDA and our farmlands view. And now you can see all of the various farms that we have purchased scattered around. We've already talked about several of these locations. And I think what we're going to try to do in kind of an orderly fashion is make our way down this main road with respect to the farms that we're going to take a look at and then go south around this, this mountain hilly area and then back around and then conclude as close as we can, once again, to the general center part of the map. And as such, the first farm we're going to take a look at is the chicken farm that is located over here. And it is technically farmland ID 131 and 233. So we have three large chicken coops. We do have a farmhouse here, as well as a few sheds. We have a manure heap. 
We have some silo storage and a diesel tank. I like how this diesel tank has been recessed in the ground, so should the fuel leak at all, well, it's not going to go too terrible far. Now, some interesting things to note about this farm and many of the other farms, and that is all of these farms have a sell point associated with them. Sumas Chickens is going to be this particular sell point, and it is located right here. If you own this farm, well, you could go and delete this sell point if you wanted to, or you could leave it here. So I like how this has been set up, where each and every possible player farm has a sell point. So if you don't own a player farm, well, you could have to come and deliver products to it, as if you are selling products to another farmer. So I do like that idea. I like the fact that I can come here at any point in time after I own this land and just click on this and say goodbye. And now that cell point is gone, it is no longer a item in play. Do have our silo storage right here. And then as far as our animal areas go, I said we have three chicken coops. Each are going to hold 2,000 chickens apiece. We have a trigger here to lower and raise the food triggers. We have our dump point for our food. And these chickens are also set up to accept straw. And as such, that means they're going to probably produce manure. Once we buy a bunch of the animals in all of these areas, I'm going to come back and take a look at the animal food overview screen so we can see what our food requirements are for all of these particular animals. Now the next farm we're going to take a look at is literally right down the road. So we're just going to go ahead and make our way over here. We are now right here beside field 14. That is going to be at farmland ID 133. So we have our sleep trigger at our farmhouse. We have lots of deco items that we can indeed sell. It's a nice vehicle storage. Oh. There you go. There's your hint. You got nine more you've got to find. So there we have our farm sell point for this particular farm location. We have our manure fill point for our cow building. We have slurry storage here. We have our food trough. And here we have an output pipe for one of our fermenting silos branded with the Canadian flag should you go and forget basically where you are we have our dump point for our fermenting silo 300 cows in this particular building then we have outputs we have interactive icons again for these fermenting silos we have a milk trigger We have hayloft, so we have dump and fill point for our hay. So we do have sleep trigger here. We had a wardrobe trigger on the other side of the farmhouse. And there you go. Now, something else that I want to point out as we make our way over to the next area, which is going to be a cow pasture, is that a lot of these 
AI kind of just deco farm areas. Well, we're going to find that they have cell points associated with them. Just like this one. And this particular cell point is going to be... Well, I thought I was... Wasn't too close. This is going to be lawn and firewood customers blue. So there's going to be several of these. For example, we have another one down here. Lawn and firewood customers blue. Because we have a blue tarp. We have a cow pasture up here on this hill. And I must have missed buying this when I was buying the rest of the farm. So we have our milk fill trigger. We have our food trough. We have our water trough. And then our animal delivery area. 80 cows in this pasture. That is also kind of a wooded area. Forest. And we're going to talk about this when we get to the fly around portion of the video. But this map has a lot of really cool features. Like a canyon where we have some nice running water. We've got flowing rivers. Coming down through here, mountain streams. It's a really well done map. It's just a little bit of a shame that, uh, well, you can see all the trees here, the view distances. Again, you, you're going to suffer a little bit potentially with respect to uh, frame rates unless you dial some settings back. The next farm we're going to take a look at here is the large cow and pig farm. This one also has a DGA associated with it. And it is right across the street from the nursery production facility. So with respect to the PDA, that is going to be located right here. Farmland ID 140. The nursery is going to be farmland ID 229. And then we do have a couple other farms that we're going to circle back to. So when we come in here, we do have our cow delivery point for 80 cows in this facility. We then have our manure heap. We also have another cow pasture located right here. 420 cows. And we have then our water, food for our cows in this pasture. We then have our slurry point and we have now one of the larger base game animal buildings we have our fill point for or we have our food and straw triggers there we have our milk trigger we have a slurry trigger on the other side Now, one thing that we are finding interesting here is I'm not finding the, the cow delivery trigger. But maybe maybe these two structures are designed to be together as opposed to apart. Maybe that's what's going on here. Here we have our biogas plant. So we have our digestate. We have our digester. We have our interactive icon here for the BGA. And we now own this biogas plant. We are going to accept silage, straw, slurry, potato, sugar beet, and sugar beet cut. And produce our normal electric, energy, methane, and digestate as far as outputs. We have several pig areas here. So we have our food triggers for these pig areas. On this side, we have our workshop trigger. We have our fuel trigger. We have our another manure heap. And then over here we have our food trough. And then 100 pigs per building. So pretty neat setup here at this combo pig and cow farm.
across the street diagonally. We have another cow farm located right here. So we have our milk trigger. We have our slurry point. We have our cow delivery area for 80 cows here. We got our food trough inside. That's also where we're going to find our straw point with a maintenance trigger few sheds and then our cell point for this farm another cow farm located right here so we were just here farmland id 138 now we're at farmland id 134 just north of field 20. So we have our slurry trigger. We have our milk trigger, our fuel for food trough, and then our cow point for 104 cows in here. A very specific number, 104. We then have a second cow shed for 50 available here. And then our slurry point, our milk, and our food. We have some storage. These storage facilities are going to hold seed, mineral feed. See if this one is the same. Lime. Lime only. And that's silo. We have a fuel point. We have some storage sheds. We got a small grain bin. And two pull through silage bunkers. We have our farm cell trigger and our manure heap. Now we're going to come back real quick because we do have a pig area that I do want to point out to us. And that's going to be over here at Farmland ID 141. This is going to be a rather a small area. We have a small shed here. We have our food. And then we have, interesting enough, down here we have our manure heap. We have a lower level for our manure heap underground. And then we have our animal dealer. Trigger for 100 pigs. And then our slurry point. We have our cell point for this farm. And then we have this farm's farmhouse. Now from there, if we make our way south, across the main road here, we do have a fuel point in Kent Gas. Across the railroad tracks, we can rent the train. We have a farm here. Now this is just a deco farm, at least as best as I can tell. We do have a cell point here at the farmhouse. But just south of the deco farm, we do have a production farm. This is gonna be another cow farm. So multiple storage silos here for seed and mineral feed. Solid fertilizer. Lime. And lime again. We have pull through silage bunker.
We have our food trough. Our milk point. Right there, we have our slurry point back there. And another 104 cows here. We have our fuel trigger. Cell point. We have our maintenance trigger inside of there. We have another cell point because this is technically a second farm right beside the first. We have several pull through silage bunkers. Total one, two, three, and four. We have seed and mineral feed in these square silos this time. Solid fertilizer and lime. So our food, we have our milk, we have our straw. 500 cows in here. We have our slurry point. Another 45 cows in this second smaller facility with our food and milk point right there. We also have another manure heap. We have our fuel storage. We have a grain bin. Across the street, we have a small farm with a water trigger and a cell point. We have another cell point located right here at this small farm location. We have a small grain bin. This is going to be one of our horse farms. Total 14 horses in here. And we're down here now, kind of toward the south part of the map, where we've got a little bit of marshland going on. Make our way around this small mountain here. Some might just call it a hill. A little deco farm, an AI deco farm. And we hang our right, make our way down. We're going to come to another cow barn. Four forty five cows. So we have another cow barn right beside it. For 60 cows. We have our slurry. We have our milk trigger there. We have our food trigger for the 60 cow barn. We have our food and our milk trigger over here for the 45 cow barn. And we have a common manure heap for both. Diesel. We have then our cell point for that farm. We've got a couple greenhouses down here. Make our way over to the north. We're going to end up just south of Field 92. But before we get over there, we want to show this. We've got a couple silage bunkers just kind of sitting here. We can buy these. We can then use them for silage. Kind of a hayloft there for storage. Got another one of these little houses that we can sell to. I think we can buy that house as well. So I was looking at this area and I wanted to make sure that this wasn't one of those little micro farms. It may be classified as a micro farm, but it does not have any animal triggers per se. And we are over here just south of field now 92. 
Let's just show you where this is on the PDA. And what we've done is we came down from this pig area down. Then we took a look at some farms here, made our way around the corner to the south, and then we made our way back up to farmland ID 167. Here at farmland ID 167, we do have another cow area. 45 cows again with a milk trigger. We're gonna have our food trigger inside. As well as our straw, we have our slurry point for the farm cell point. We have our manure heap, a couple more fermenting silos. Or a single fermenting silo. And then this is gonna be for lime storage. Now we've got the central town area here. This is where a lot of the productions, a lot of the cell points are located. We're gonna come back to this during a later portion of the video when we're getting to the drive around or the, not drive, the fly around portion. We've got our animal dealer here. But what I wanna do is make my way to the north because we do have some farms located up here. Now we've made our way over here to this sheep farm. Just outside of town. We're gonna hold 65 sheep per building. And we have our food troughs there and there. And we have our wool point there, our wool point there. Fuel. And we're gonna have our fertilizer storage, lime storage. Hundred and fifty sheep in this open pasture. And we're gonna have our water. We're gonna have our food. And then we have possibly our wool. Well we really don't see it. I'm thinking maybe, hopefully, our wool's gonna spawn there. We have our cell point for our farm there. If we are going to deliver here as an AI farm, or we're just going to maintain that for easy and quick selling. That is going to be our sheep area. Making our way around the corner, we do have another horse farm. Gonna be located right here, right on the corner. We have our fuel storage, we have a grain storage, we have the farm cell trigger. And then we have a couple horse buildings. So I wanna get to this point to give you a frame of reference as to where we are looking at this horse farm because I was having a little bit of difficulty in figuring out where the buy trigger was for these three buildings. And well, they're all over here in one little section at this little bit of a loading ramp. So we have eight there. We have then another eight there. And then we have a final eight over here. So all three at this area. I like that ramp set up there. And now we have horses in all three buildings.
continue to make our way over here now we've come nearly full circle because this is where we started everything at as far as our starting farm location so right down the street from our far starting farm location we have then the horses but we also have a few other farms right around the corner in fact we have three really close to each other on this road So this is going to be a cow farm. We have 60 cows here. With our food, our slurry, our milk, our manure heap. We have a large cow barn. Located here. We have a food trough. Our straw trigger. Five hundred and fifty cows here. We have our milk. We have another five hundred and fifty cows there. With our farm cell trigger. And the food trough for that set of cows is located inside of here. Making our way north up the road a wee little bit. We have another cow farm. Five hundred cows here. Lots of farms on this map. Lots of farms. We have our slurry point. We have our dump point for our mineral feed. And we have a feeding robot cow barn here. So we are hay, straw, and grass. Or hay, straw, and silage. We have another hay loft with our dump and fill points we have storage for lime and solid fertilizer small grain bin a slurry trigger we have our milk we have our food trough and 104 cows here. Like I said, we have 58 animal areas throughout the entire map. So you're going to have the limited ability of placing additional animal areas because even with the more animal areas mod, which is listed as a required mod for this map, you can put down a total of just 64. So we have fuel storage. And another cow building for another 150 cows. Another cow building for a total of 60 cows. We have our food, slurry and milk. We've already talked about maybe our manure heap there. And there we go. Now diagonal right across the street. We have yet another cow farm. So we have our water. It's our food, sorry. 500 cows here. Almost done the animal buildings. We have lime silo. We have a fertilizer silo. We have five horses. Across the street, we have one of the hop facilities. And then we have our cement production 
And then up the hill we have from that our racetrack. We have bank barn, traditional American bank barn. We do have storage here in this bank barn for a total of 300 bales. And we're going to be able to then drop our bales down to the feeding trough below, the straw trigger below. We have our manure heap. We have another fermenting silo. Food and water. Another five horses in this second area. And an additional 15 cows in this small pasture right by the street with food and water. There you go. Now over here, we have found ourselves some chickens, everyone. Some free range chickens. Thirty there. And this trigger is a little hard to Locate. Let's go ahead and cheat a little bit. Well, it should be right there, but it's not popping up. So, I gotta wonder, maybe, just maybe, that is a duplicate. So, we now have our food. We have our water there. We have food there. So I really do think that this is supposed to be set up as a double chicken pasture. But again, this trigger is just not, just not activating for me. Because we do have two points here for our eggs to spawn. Across field 110, we then have a larger free range chicken area located right here. We have a grain storage. We have the two food troughs for those chickens. And then these are back to back. 100 chickens in each of these areas. Then we have additional food troughs on this end. I am a little curious because I do not necessarily see where these eggs are going to spawn. I may be completely missing it, so if I am, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Believe it or not, there's actually a few animal areas that I missed when I went around here the first time. And I wanted to bring your attention to those because we have a two, two cow pastures down here at this large cow farm. 
we are right down here. So zoom on out to give a little bit of point of reference as to where we are. So we are right here by a field of 39. Farmland ID 39, you do need to buy in order to see these two cow pastures. And they are again right here at this large cow farm. And once you do buy that field, you will then have access to these two pastures. We have 80 cows there with our water, food, and milk. And then water, food, and milk. For a total of 160 cows in total between these two areas. In addition, if we make our way up this road, past the main road, past the chicken farm, or not the chicken, the pig farm that is located right here at Farmland 9141. Continue up the way. We're going to hang right here at this. We have our sawmill. We have our racetrack. We have our concrete production facility. We've looked at those farms, but we completely overshadowed this area here, which is going to be for sheep and horses. Kind of a combination. So we have water, we have food, and then this is going to be for horses. Five horses here. And then we have sheep, 15 sheep. Same pasture. Then we have our water, our food, and our wool for the sheep. And they just kind of hang out here together. And then right down the hill, we have the same thing. So we have food, water, animal trigger for another 15 sheep. And then we have another five horses. Food, water. And there we go. We have our wool for our sheep down here, located right there. Kind of an interesting mix of mixing sheep and horses. And that is going to be most of these animal pens. I think there's just a handful that we have missed. But you know what? That is quite the extensive list. None the less. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our animal food requirements. And see what it's going to take to feed all of these animals. Cows look pretty standard. As well do sheep. Pigs, if we do have then the premium expansion enabled, of course, carrots, parsnips, and red beets are going to be added as acceptable root crops for our pigs. We have horses, again, root crops are going to be added if we have the premium expansion. And then we have our chickens, so all fairly standard animal food requirements. Now we've done the farm tour. Let's go ahead and take a look at the productions that are available here on Fraser Valley. So I want to jump back here to the Hilly Farms itch.io page because he has a whole section on production. So before we run down through our production overview, I want to run through his production overview. Hops production notes. So the building on farmland ID 130 only removes the raw hop cones from the vines. If you would like to continue the production line beyond that, you'll need to go to one of the other three larger hop buildings where you can, in addition to Removing the raw hop cones, you can dry the cones. Neither of the smaller or larger hop buildings can be placed in game. You can only use what is built into the map. You can also plant hop vines anywhere by going to store others, construction, production, orchards, basically the same place where your grapes or olives are. In the Czech Republic, hops farmers use heating oil to dry the hops, but in British Columbia, it's much more likely that the farmers will use propane gas. In game, both heating oil and propane gas are basically the same thing, and that has been done for simplicity's sake. With respect to cement production, and this is where it gets a little bit confusing. 
So we can bring in limestone from the quarry and just produce lime and sell that. We can then take limestone and run it through the crusher and get crushed limestone, which we can then further process into lime. We can bring stones into the crusher sorter and get sand, gravel, and garden stone. We can then take gravel, cement, and water and produce concrete. We can take lime, sand, and clay and produce our cement. So it's kind of running you through the same general process. And then we have, well, just a complete phrased bit of arrows here explaining where each particular trigger is going to be located. So our stone trigger is going to be located here. It's going to be the one on the right if you are facing the building, whereas the one on the left is going to be for limestone. I do hope that these are adequately marked when we get into the game, as opposed to having to use this as a reference all the time. We're also going to be able to take garden stone to a location there. Crushed limestone is going to be input there, or this is going to be an output, I believe, and there. We have lime, which is going to be available here, concrete here, and cement here. Clay is going to be available from the train yards, and we'll show you where that is. Gravel is going to be available there and there, as well as stand again, sand again, where our crushed limestone was. Nurseries. So we do have nursery beds and seedling houses. We will need seedlings for our nursery beds. You can see that they are numbered here. So we can see which number is going to correspond to the location. The main road is located here as a frame of reference. Nursery production, we're going to need fertilizer, herbicide, and liquid fertilizer, as well as pallets to make our planted or potted plants. And then we're going to need seed, manure, straw, liquid fertilizer, and pallets to make our hedge. We also have then seed, manure, straw, liquid fertilizer, and pallets to make our potted plants. And then over here in this, we're going to see seed, manure, straw, liquid fertilizer, herbicide, and pallets to make our seedlings. Seedlings, manure, straw, and pallets in order to make then the hedge. And that is going to be basically be what we need to cover there on that site. So let's go ahead and talk about our production here in game. So we've already talked about the BGA and the fermenting silos that are available. We have our carpentry, which is going to take wood or planks and make pallets, as well as wood chip and furniture. We have large greenhouses, which are going to take water, make our tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries. Pretty standard base game stuff there. Our grape processor is also fairly standard. We have a total of nine large greenhouses available to us on this map. We have our hops comber. Com com comber. Uh, it's not combiner. Uh, I'm not sure. Any rate, we're going to take our hops and we're going to make raw cones and vine waste. Our second biogas plant is going to be fairly standard base game at BGA. We have our spinnery for our wool cotton to make into fabric. Remember, we can't sell our fabric, at least not in the version that I have that we're making this video on. So we will need to take our fabric and further process that. We have our dairy for our milk and sugar to make our butter, cheese, and chocolate, as well as a fairly standard bakery. Gravel and sand production. So gravel is going to require stones. It's going to output gravel and garden stones. Sand is going to be coming from stones. It's going to output sand and garden stones as well. Crushed limestone. Well, we're going to have limestone in and crushed limestone out. Lime production is going to be crushed limestone to produce lime. And lime production direct is going to be limestone to make lime. Cement production. Well, we're going to take lime, sand, and clay and make that into cement. And then our concrete is going to take that cement, gravel, and water, and mix it all into concrete. Then lastly, we have our sawmill, which is going to take regular wood and can make planks, wood chips, 
and pallets. So we have two sawmills. Because we also had that up here. Sorry, that's a carpentry. So carpentry and sawmill. There are also some productions that you need to buy the land in order to own. So some is just buying the production. Other is actually buying the land that that is on. And those are going to be our three hops combiner dryers. They are going to take hops, raw cones, heating oil pallets, and propane gas. And again, heating oil and propane gas are basically the same fill type for this map. And they are then going to basically output raw hops vine waste and dried hops we also have our seedling houses which are going to take seed liquid fertilizer herbicide and pallets and output seeds or designer plants which i was calling the potted plants earlier we also have our nursery areas which are going to take seedlings manure straw pallets seeds and fertilizer and make hedges out of those so we have hedges from seedlings or hedges from seed and then our designer plants as well. We've got quite a number of seedling houses and nursery areas. If we take a look at the PDA, so our nursery is going to be here at Farmland ID 229. You will need to buy that. In addition, for your hops, you're going to need to buy Farmland ID 241, Farmland ID 228, and Farmland ID 130. Then lastly, there is one over here at Farmland ID 2. To seven. And we can identify those because we have the little H here for those particular hop areas. They're not, not exactly always going to be right where they actually are, but here we are, in fact, right in front of one of the hops buildings, right next to the railroad tracks. And you can see that building there. So if you do see structures like this, you will know that they are the hops area. Now, speaking of the railroad tracks, we know this is where we're going to come and get our sand. We have two large piles of sand here that we're going to be able to come and collect. Then once we collect sand from here, we're going to be able to take it up to our cement factory, which is way over there, and then process it into cement. We also here have our LPG, our propane gas storage we get here at this yard we have a few buildable sites scattered around the map one of them is right down here by our animal dealer and we can sell the trash that is here we can buy the land and then we're going to be able to make use of this and when we do do that we will be able to sell this cell point here as well right down for that we have our animal dealer it is located right here right along the eastern edge of the map. Then like I said, we've got a ton of things going on here in town. So we do have cell points here at this farmer's market area. Lots of residents here, which are going to accept various small products another one of these building sites like i mentioned earlier and then we have these farms that we've already taken a look at cell points production points all along here we have our carpentry more of those consumer cell points. This is a contractor yard. This is one of the two large contractor yards, which we hadn't really talked about at this point. This is going to be located here at Farmland ID 2, sorry, 177. 219, 177. This is 177. $629,000 for this contractor facility. This we've got lots of sheds, storage. We do have a fermenting silo and a buy point for product. Lots of storage silos as well. And let's talk about this hops building. So 
So inside this building, we have our dump point for our hops. We're going to dump point for our other inputs, like our gas and our pallets. And then we have our interactive icon here. All right, to that's where we're going to add our gas. And we're going to find our pallets located over here. We do have, for whatever reason, located down here at the train yard, we have a silo or a auger. It looks like we're going to be able to deposit into this location. Here we have our dump point to also sell here at the train station. So we have our train conveyor silo and our train pit silo, then our train cell point itself. Now I've already alluded to, there's so many, like these little consumer cell points around the map and it can get to be a little bit of a confusion as to trigger areas like this one's going to accept i think firewood and other products we do have our dealer located right here for our machinery let's go ahead and pick up our mahindra Then we have our maintenance trigger here around back. And you may ask yourself, well, where, where does our Mahindra spawn? Well, it's over here. So it is a fairly large structure where we have our triggers over here. And this is where our vehicles are going to spawn at over here. So here we have our Mahindra. We have a forklift over here at the shop as well. Fairly large area for vehicles to spawn. And we actually do have trigger markers here showing us how big that area is. Right across the street from the shop, we do have four of those large greenhouses. We want to come up and over the mountain because this area that we looked at earlier it is a hay cell point right here sorry wrong location Please forgive me. Like I said, there is, there's so much going on here and it's a little hard to keep track of everything in one's head. We do have fuel located over here. We have our bakery and our dairy located here as well. There's the bakery. There is our dairy. Fuel. We have the sheep farm. We're going to make our way up north. This is where we had our free range chickens. To our biogas plant, our second biogas plant, where we have three three sided bunkers. And we can come up around the back of those and dump in the rear. It's really cool when we see that added. Coming across here, we have those two chicken areas. One 
was a little suspect. The other one was working just fine. And we're going to come over here to our quarry. And this is, well, this is where we're going to need to reference that image, I believe. And we do have piles of stone and more stone over here, different, different color. So fill points, I do wish these had icons that would really help delineate what's going on. Remember from the graphic, one was for one thing, one was for two other things. We do have our interactive icon down here. And we have a spawn point of such, but it is, well, it's blocked off. We also have a dump point located over here. Again, please reference the web page because again, things are, well, there's a lot going on here. So here we have a belt and this belt is going to be something we can use in order to basically decide where this is going to dump in one of these areas. We then have our interactive icon for our concrete production there and for our cement production there. Another dump point. Again, reference that diagram, please. And then we have another belt set up in order to either dump there or dump over here as far as our finished products. This is going to be our interactive icon for our crushed limestone production. We already looked at that icon. And we have the entrance to this facility overall. We have a fill point there. We have another belt that we can make use of here. Overall, this area is fairly, fairly complex, fairly confusing, and I do do wish that we had a little bit more guidance other than simply having to constantly reference that image that was again on the website web listing. We go ahead and pull that up now again as a frame of reference. So what we have seen, right? We have our stone here on the right. We have our limestone on the left, as well as our garden stone. We have then our limestone, sand, and gravel, crushed limestone, sand, and gravel. Here, that's where we had that belt. Then over here, we have our clay that we're going to need to input. So our two belts are going to output gravel, limestone, and sand. Then we're going to have outputs for our lime, concrete, and cement at these different areas. Does that help clear it up at all? It doesn't for me, honestly. It really doesn't clear it up for me. Here we have those sheep and horse areas that we talked about. And right on top here, we do have a little bit of a fun racetrack to, uh, to get a little bit of fun on. We have our sawmill here with our various triggers. One for production, one for sale. And then we have a nice road and this is gonna take us up into the woods to do our various bit of forestry. Here we have the canyon I wanna run through here in a little bit on. Another a remote cell point here at this kind of canyon waterway.
And then this is where we had some of our starting machinery. We have one of those hops facilities that I had already mentioned and we talked about earlier. And then our canyon is going to kind of open up here. We're going to run the other direction on it. And I think that's what we're going to do to kind of close out this video. A long video, a lot going on, a ton going on. And to think that this is, this is his first map. I mean, what a big, big project to bite off as your first public project. Seriously, it's a huge, huge accomplishment in my books, regardless of the score that we're going to give it, regardless of the criticisms that we have given it. This is a monumental task. And if you've never tried to build a map, then you may not really be able to fully grasp how monumental a 4x map is as your first project or a 4x map with 20 plus farms and lots of custom productions and fill types and crazy amount of trees and terrain changes this map has 41 productions built in we've already talked about that so we are going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such with respect to the ability to sell all of our basing crops, animal output, and production items. We are going to be taking off a quarter of a point because in this release, we do not have the ability to sell fabric. It would be nice if that does get updated to add that capability. And I'd also like to see the capability of selling sugarcane. I probably forgot the name of it. Selling our sugarcane because it is possible for players to turn off the growth calendar and basically then make use of the map because it does indeed include sugarcane. With respect to the farms being customizable, we are going to give the map three quarters of a point. Now, when I was doing my exploration of this map, I did run into instances where I was not able to sell certain things on certain farms. And that may or may not be resolvable with respect to the fact that if you buy the common land, the $0 farmland ID 255, that you may then be able to sell certain things. With respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique, yes. And with respect to our ground textures, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Landscaping, painting, we have fairly standard ground textures and fairly standard plants and trees. Once again, with respect to our hops, we're going to go to production orchards and we're going to be able to then place hops down just like we would with our grapes and our olives. And we're not going to really run down through all of the building areas because, well, this map has a boatload of required mods. Most of them are place of all mods and of course the map is going to be just completely inundated with various buildings and things in the build mode now the last point of interest here is going to be interactive triggers being clearly marked and well we're gonna to have to take some points off for this because we are missing a couple indicators here and there that I was a little confused on. Some of the things like this horse farm where we had the three, three viable areas, it was a little confusing. We eventually found it. It's not that big of a deal. I think my biggest, my biggest hang up is going to be over here at the cement factory. I would have loved to have seen signage signage showing me showing me what's what's this what right what's what's this and all i need is a little icon two little fill type icons showing me what what shows up here a little fill type icon showing me what goes in there a little fill type icon again for here 
definitely over right here or this location it's just kind of out in the middle of nowhere what what goes there right it's a little bit confusing as to what goes where what comes out of where and i think what you're going to be going to have to do is really study that graphic and at the same time maybe just experiment with starting productions up and seeing what shows up where in order to get a really good grasp for that we also have things here like empty greenhouses it would be really nice to have seen basically these usable in some way or buyable and then make them usable because the way they are right now they're pretty much just hanging out here they're just deco objects so overall what we're going to do is we're going to give this map a score of four out of five okay so we took a quarter point off with respect to being able to sell fabric and not being able to sell fabric and sugar cane. We took a quarter point off with respect to farms and the overall customization. And again, that may have been reflected or, or corrected with respect to buying some farmland that I didn't necessarily realize I needed to buy. If I didn't necessarily realize it, and I took a look down through the description quite a bit, then I can imagine lots of other players are going to have that same experience. And then lastly, I took a half a point off with respect to trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked. But still, this is an amazing map. I wish it performed better. I wish frame rates weren't as, as difficult to achieve. Here we are sitting 40s, 50s. But if I look down, boom, we're, up, we're back up there where we need to be. Right? If I just look at this mountain, now we're in the mid-50s. Look over there, right? The more trees I see, the lower my frames are going to go. So I do wish the map was maybe a bit more optimized, but I can also understand that if you're if you're sitting here and you see absolutely nothing over there on the hillside, well, it can start to feel a little bit barren. And by cranking those LODs up, you then at least see some trees. And I'm very, very looking forward to seeing how FS25 performs and how their modifications with respect to the trees ultimately improves performance overall on tree heavy maps and tree heavy locations i'd love to know your all thoughts down in the comments below with respect to fraser valley are you going to give this map a try in single player or are you going to try to find a crew and get going with this map in multiplayer and until next time Happy farming.